Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have a Jeep Wrangler from New Jersey, uh, 2014, 140,000 miles, and customer complaint is check engine lights on, some kind of timing correlation code after engine work. So the history of this thing is, uh, well, let's read what the customer wrote here. Um, description of problems, some trouble codes, P0018, check engine light, obviously bought it used, put a new intake cam, lifters plus rockers on the passenger side, motor started, ran quiet, but started surging, took it to the local shop, they put new timing chains on it, slack adjusters, lifters and rockers on the driver's side, now I'm having these issues. Okay, so the Jeep did not have any codes before. It had a tick, the classic Pentastar tick where the roller fails on the, you know, the follower and the cam was, the lobe was wiped out. So he replaced the intake cam on bank one. That is the passenger side, okay? Now that cam was aftermarket and the reluctor was not right. Computer is not happy. So he took it to the shop and they put in a stock intake cam on the passenger side on bank one and also did all the the you know rocker arm followers on the driver's side that's bank two new chains and now it's setting a p0018 what is the p0018 let's do a health report uh look at some live data All right, so here is the health report. PCM is indeed setting a P0018, crankshaft position, camshaft position, correlation, bank two, sensor one, and a 430 code, cat efficiency, bank two. Okay, now, TCM and ABS, these two codes are basically saying there's a problem in the engine, we're gonna limit the torque, and the customer said on a cold start, you first start driving, after a few minutes, it'll just lose power, it won't shift, you pull over, restart it, and then you can drive it all day long. So those are the symptoms. Uh, where would you start? Well, considering you had no codes before, the driver's side was touched, and you know now it's setting a cam crank correlation code. Supposedly it runs fine, it runs smooth, so mechanical timing is probably close, but something's off the computer's not happy. So in this case, let's look at live data, see if um, we can see the degrees of you know commanded versus actual on all four cams and kind of logically deduce the problem. So in the PCM, if you go to live data, we're just interested in the intake and exhaust cam Uh, you know, desired actual crank difference. So the exhaust cam one and cam cam two. Uh, we can look at duty cycle. It sh with this code, it should zero. The duty cycle should be zero. These things should be locked in their home position because if the timing is off, the initial timing, the computer locks the cams because it doesn't want to phase the cams to avoid engine damage. That's the strategy. And that makes sense. So. Well, let's put an actual position, desired position, and then for the intake cam, one, two, three, four, five. So we have 16 data pids. Uh, let's see, desired position we actually don't need because the crank difference will tell us. There are 12 data pids, we can graph those. All right, so let's start up. We know bank one is good. The code is for sensor, or bank two, sensor one, which is the exhaust side. Okay, so you see all the duty cycles are 0%. That's uh, expected. 
exhaust cam one, about minus two degrees, that's fine. Intake cam one, minus 0.5 degrees on the money. Exhaust cam two is plus 13 degrees. That's the one setting a code. And intake cam two is minus 10 degrees. Now that's right at the threshold. It's not setting a code for that yet. But if it's above 10 degrees, apparently it's uh, it's not happy. And you get the little squiggly lines, the ABS system's not happy. So what could be the problem? What did they mess up? Is it possible that it's the timing chain is off a tooth on bank two? Um, we can count the teeth on a picture, you know, of a sprocket, see if it's off a tooth, how many degrees would that be? But it's very suspicious. One cam is advanced and the other one's retarded by about the same, by about 10 degrees. Hmm. <laughs> is it possible when they did the rockers, you have to take the cams out? Could they have switched the intake and exhaust cam? Is that a possibility? Or did they have the phasers off? That's going to be my gut feeling, initial guess, but let's do a little more research, pull in the shop and see if we can pinpoint this problem uh, accurately. All right, so first, looking up this trouble code, P0018, camshaft position correlation bank two, sensor one. We have to be 100% accurate which sensor this is and which camshaft this is. So they have two camshaft sensors and they're dual sensors um, looking at both cams. So one sensor on one bank, the other sensor is on the other bank. And right here, here's the layout of the engine. So one and two, this is passenger side. Intake and exhaust. And three and four, intake and exhaust. So already I see a uh, an error on Chrysler's part. The intakes are the ones closer to the intake ports, right? So number two should be an intake, number three should be an intake. That's up absolutely wrong already <laughs> on, on this uh, little chart. Now, sensor five, that would be right here. It's a dual cam sensor, driver's bank. So bank one camshaft sensor, sensor one exhaust, sensor two is in intake. Okay, and then same on the other bank. So, that's that. Now we can do some rock auto research. Can we, you know, are these cams interchangeable? Are these cam sprockets, the VVT actuators interchangeable? Well, each cam is unique. So you have exhaust, right, or bank one, intake right, then exhaust left, and intake left for bank two. For the actual sprockets, we just have intake and exhaust, okay? So those two are not the same, but bank to bank, they should be the same. If we look at a picture, and you count the number of teeth here, I counted 33 teeth on this sprocket and if we do 720 divided by 33 about 22 degrees per tooth so if we were one tooth off with respect to the crank it would be 22 degrees um, error we're off about 10 degrees so I don't it's not a timing chain problem could the cams be swapped around? Intake to exhaust. Potentially. Um, or could just the phasers be swapped? So you have to look at the camshafts. So intake left and exhaust left. So intake is the 1419, right here, this is the intake. So this is the VVT actuator side, there's a little notch right there. 
Um, where's the notch with respect to like the first two lobes? So about, I don't know, less than 90 degrees from the notch, we have the first two lobes. For the exhaust cam, if we have a notch here, the lobes are almost 180 degrees out. They're like over 180 degrees. So you can't just swap the cams bank to bank and leave the phasers. What's the most likely scenario? Did they, ta did they take the phasers off the cams when just doing the rockers? Probably not. Is it possible that they swapped intake and exhaust cams? I think that's a possibility and you can still get the timing close but it won't be spot on. What's the easiest way to check? Well, on the BVT actuators they should be clearly marked EXH or IN. And you see the arrows and the marks, that's for the timing. Kind of like the Maserati, same basically the same engine. So, yes, we can put on a scope to measure all four cam signals, see what the correlation is. But I think the quickest thing to do here is take off this throttle body and get to the VVT you know, oil control solenoids, pop those off, and we should be able to see the letters on the phasers like EXH or IN. So, let me do that real quick. So this will be kind of a just a logical diagnosis. If those two are spot on, we'll get the scope out and be more, um, you know, get some more data, see what's going on. You know, the intake manifold has to come off to get the valve cover off. It's not a huge job, but for diagnostics, you want to be the less intrusive, the better, because I assume that if we find a problem here, which we have to, the other shop that did this work will be responsible. So they're going to have to warranty this job. So I don't want to do too much teardown. I just want to give the customer 100% guaranteed diagnosis. All right, so check number one. Throttle body's off. Oil control solenoids are off. Let's check what letters are on these sprockets. So this should be intake. And indeed it is. And this should be exhaust. You can see right there in my mirror, EXH. So that's not our problem. What else could the problem be? Now the difference, if one is minus 10, the other one's plus 13, that's about that 22 degrees. So is it possible that one of the cams is off one tooth and the computer's trying to like kind of even them out. Hmm. Well, what's the next easiest thing to do? We'd spin the engine over, see if we can just line up the timing marks through these holes. If there's an obvious, you know, if something obvious shows up there, we're done. If not, we're going to have to pull this valve cover off. So I want, to, I want to see if the cam to cam timing is appropriate. All right, OEM service info. Here's how we line up the marks. So passenger side bank one, we want the two lines on the sprockets to the line and the arrows pointing out. And here we want the arrows pointing towards each other and the marks, I guess, pointing out. Does that make sense? Yeah, so let me spin the engine over until these marks are lined up and we'll see what's going on with our arrows. All right, so all four oil control solenoids are off and it's kind of hard to see, but you can see a line right there. It's parallel to, to the cylinder head and right there, see the edge of it. It's also parallel to the cylinder head. And the computer is happy with the, the uh, passenger side bank, bank one. What's going on with bank two? The arrows should be pointing towards each other. The intake, yeah, it looks like it's pointing that way. That's easy to see. The exhaust is harder to see because of this radiator hose. Bank two. 
but you know just eyeballing it maybe through here it's pretty close but the computer is saying this one's a little retarded by 10 degrees this one's advanced by 13 degrees very suspicious so what I want to do is get a scope capture off of these cams and we have a no good from that 2013 Chrysler Town & Country with the same exact trouble code where the well you'll have to see the video what the problem was with that one but you know the engine run, runs pretty smoothly so the mechanical timing I believe is fine but why is the computer fussing about these cam signals once advanced and once retarded we see a brand new cam sensor on there maybe <laughs> what about over here see that's I think that's OEM it has some part numbers on it so if we get a weird scope capture we can try swapping the two cam sensors around see if the cam sensor itself is doing something funky and that's the way to go so visual inspection no red flags just yet alright we got four channels going here at the engine computer bank 2 intake, bank 2 exhaust, bank 1 intake, bank 1 exhaust same exact setup as the Chrysler Town & Country uh, I have that known good waveform so all we have to do is pull that up click record and compare this Jeep to that Chrysler. Okay, so here's our known good waveform, and we expect the intakes bank two and bank one, that's channel A and C. So blue and green should line up perfectly, and then the red and the yellow should line up perfectly. So here we go. We're recording. Let's fire it up. Stabilize it. Okay. So here we go. I'm sure something's not going to line up. <laughs> um, so bank one is our known good C and D. The yellow and the green are the known good traces. Now the intakes should line up and we see here on C bank one intake let's pull that up it's not lining up with the green bank one exhaust it's definitely not lining up with the yellow huh So if bank one is good, bank two you can see is exhaust is retarded. Okay, yellow is following the red, and the blue is actually following the green. Hmm. So let me do a little more, uh, you know, wrap my head around this. Because with four signals, it's a little tough to compare apples to apples here. But we'll see exactly what's advanced, what's retarded, and by how many degrees. All right, so the computer is telling us exactly what's going on. So green and blue green is known good bank one intake the blue you can see it's retarded by about nine degrees and on scan data I took a screenshot intake cam 2 is about nine degrees retarded minus nine on the exhaust again the yellow trace is bank one exhaust the red trace is bank two exhaust and that is now we're advanced over advanced 
by about 13 degrees, minus 13. So that's why, right there, 13 degrees advanced, bank two. How do you explain this? <laughs> oh man, this is actually, there's no easy explanation. Either shifted reluctor wheels, So it's one, there's one tooth difference between the two, but none of them are one tooth off with respect to the other bank. So the chain and the phasers, you know, there's a, a pin, those are OEM. Why is one advanced, the other one a little retarded? We can try swapping the cam sensors around. Wow, this one is actually uh, pretty tough. So without an oscilloscope, no chance here. <clears throat> Otherwise, it probably would have figured it out already. So I can try swapping the cam sensors around just to see if there's any difference. And then we'll go from there. All right, next experiment. I swapped the two dual cam sensors around. So now this is the OEM. Over there is the whatever, X-brand Chinesium. Let's fire it up and see if anything changes, just to rule out that variable. And we'll uh, look at scan data as well. All right, here we go. Roll the scope. Fire it up. So there is some difference. Now it's plus 15, minus 11. And this is about one and minus four. So I'm gonna take a picture of this. But still, exhaust is way advanced. Intake is way retarded. With the OE sensor. So, popped off the valve cover here on the driver's side and everything looks spot on the money I don't see anything wrong with this timing setup so we count 12 pins between the two notches here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 perfect intake exhaust that's correct the arrows are pointing towards each other all the flats are aligned the timing holes are up here it's perfect new chain, new guides, and yet the intake is retarded by 10 degrees and the exhaust is advanced by 13 degrees or so. How do you explain that? Or can both of these reluctor wheels shift? Is there something wrong with the cam sensor? I mean, the, you can't really mess this up. It just sits right here. There's only one way you can go. The dual cam sensor. You can see it's pointing towards the two magnetic rings. And that's it. Everything's original. Original cams, original phasers. The only thing they put on is the chain. And then they tried a cam sensor. That didn't work. It's almost like it's a tooth off, but it's not. How the heck do you explain that? There's some gray stuff on these. You can actually see the magnetic transitions. Would that have anything to do with it? It's almost like if we lift up the sensor, it would um, advance the signal of the intake and retard the signal of the exhaust. So if we lift up the sensor like that much, <laughs> we could get rid of this code Engine would run fine, it would phase, it would do everything fine. I don't have an explanation for this problem.